Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India are going to start module 7. We are trying to complete dam proofing and insulation in this module. If we can cover we will try to put in something more and then we will finish with module 8. Maybe there is some little change as it was discussed in the very initial lecture. So, let us start with damp proofing and insulation and today's lecture of this part module 7 lecture 1 we will discuss on damp proofing. Now, coming to damp proofing all of you all of you are quite aware of the term damp. It is a physical thing which you can see when it has already happened. It is not that once you see a patch on a wall or on a floor or on a corner or at a particular location you can just wipe it off. It is a phenomena that is happening which takes a long time to be visible to, a, to an expert or to the habitats of the building when maybe it is too late to mend. So, we need to know as architects that where are the possibilities or which are the possible points which can cause damp and then finally, in this beginning lecture we will just mention the various methods of damp proofing. So, as you all know that all building materials are absorbent of water. We try to make our building as impervious as possible, but as you remember in our very first module we had talked of brick which actually absorbs up to 20 percent water. We have wood another building material which also absorb water. We are, we are looking into constructions where brick is mostly used foundations. So, water is bound to enter buildings if we are not protecting it. So, what is damp? The effect of continuous exposure of a whole building or part of building or parts of building to moisture and water is damp. The effect what you see is the effect. Dampness is the presence of moisture in some hygroscopic material. Hygroscopic means water absorbing material. So, a brick is a hygroscopic material, wood is a hygroscopic material and they can absorb water and they will look dampy. Concrete we have made it, we have learned how to make concrete, we have made it with coarse aggregate, fine aggregate and cement and there it is much consolidated non porous and hence entrapment of moisture or entry of moisture is very difficult. So, concrete may be considered considering our domain of building it is not that absorbing like brick or wood. So, here you see some pictures where actually you can understand that damping is happening. 
even due to moist condition trees plants can grow mosses algae can grow which is very much unhygienic we have to keep our building as dry as possible but we have to keep our building open to atmosphere so if the atmosphere is happening happening having lot of moisture the choice of paint should be such that it will protect the building from moisture entry but you cannot stop it you can only take precautions or measures when you are making a building so these unhygienic conditions may lead to respiratory problems of inhabitants moist interiors that may lead to unhealthy conditions particularly child and old people if it is entering into the structural system it may ruin the concrete as you have seen in while we dealt ferrous metals so the structure may get degraded so we have to be very careful we have to close all openings that does not mean we do not have doors and windows they always attract water but if it is a heavy shower then you have to close the doors and windows to avoid the water but those are known points where from water can enter where one can take an action but there are various points where one cannot take action and preventive measures are to be taken when the building is being made let us come to that so this is the foundation of a building this side on your left on your on this side it is outside this side is the inside of a building so here this a lot of rain etc is happening below ground there is the moisture in the soil gradually the ground water may increase affecting the building foundation there may be underground pipes as you can see even below the inside of building which is not much recommended and there may be leakages on these lines which may again affect the wall creating some pressure on the wall and the moisture tries to move gradually through capillary action so it may enter from this side it may enter from outside it may come from rain water but if you see this is the concrete mass that is the floor this will not allow it to move further up and this is the room actually this is the room or the habitable space but wall is continuing the external wall is continuing so if this wall continues to carry the moisture up up and up your wall will get the entire external wall will get damaged by the moisture which is getting through the underground so you have to stop the entry of moisture at such a point where from it won't further go up here there is a tie beam so just below that you see there is a black line so if you can check the entry of water at such point because this mass is again concrete that is a tie beam which is made of concrete this is also concrete 
So, these won't this point from this point there is no possibility of water entry or moving up there is little less chance. So, if you can stop the entry here at where the black line lies you can check the water entry. You can not you cannot avoid a underground plumbing leak even if it is a dry soil your building services will be going just beside your building. So, your building may experience some failures of the plumbing lines sewer lines which can also create similar pressure on the wall surface from outside or may be from inside. So, all these may lead to entry of water to the building. You we were discussing of rain also. So, when there is a rainfall your building facade that is the external wall is continuously experiencing that rainfall rain water. So, if you are not putting a proper jacket as you get drenched the wall will also get drenched. The water which is accumulating say it is a water logged area there are chances that your up to plinth that is entry to the building up to that height if there is water logging just below that level you need to protect that outside wall from up to the plinth level because if it is crossing the plinth level water will enter into your house. So, we are concerned up to the plinth level the water should not any accumulated water should not destroy the wall which is at the periphery of the building that is the outer building wall. So, we need to protect that. So, these are design details which are also taught in design classes, but what we need to know is what is this black line? what is this blue line doing doing the plinth protection is it concrete is it something impervious obviously things should be of such kind so we will have to know each of them and how to be applied So, let us come to the sources of water entry. So, ground water as I told you is one of the most important point which we need to check from the very very starting of the building construction that is the foundation. So, necessary treatments are to be done when it is ground water. Next we have the rain water which the entire building is facing. It may be during a particular season, it may be throughout the year, it may be a dry area. So, based on that we need to have proper measures taken for the rain water. We do not have in India in the plains we do not have much sloping roofs other than the rural sites or the low cost low uh, height buildings. We have mostly high rise buildings apartment blocks where the roof is flat. The rain water gets accumulated in the roof also. So, proper drainage from the roof of the rain water from the roof is mandatory. 
that calls for proper slopes towards the rainwater pipes, etcetera. Coming to building cracks, when your building external is having cracks because of may be settlement, because of structural failures, because of some damage, you just cannot ignore it. Because mostly after the brick layer, you have a plaster layer with the crack or the damage, a portion of the plaster may come out or there may be gaps between the walls. In the wall such that water can enter through it, propagate through it, such kind of points becomes the vulnerable point for building so far as damp is concerned. And the last, but not at all the least, which we ignore, we never register, we overlook is the building services. Leakages in pipes, inlet pipe, outlet pipe, rainwater pipe, any kind of lines, routes leakages in that leads to damp. Provision of damp proofing material can prevent moisture entry to the building from these known sources. So, our objective is to tap those points where from we can minimize the chances of damp to be propagated inside the building and we take, say, take measures for controlling that. So, coming to the first gro ground water, moisture constantly travels through the pervious soil and tries to penetrate, water rises through capillary action from ground, ground and causes damage. So, protection should be continuously put along the peripheral wall below ground. Damp proof course is one such measure. So, what are the materials involved we will discuss in next lecture, but today we will restrict to the causes. What happens to rain water if it is a very heavy shower, rain may beat against the external facades, it may enter into the building as I told you walls at as I told you doors and windows are the entry points of water, but one can take care of such water. But the building if it has cracks, it can water can pass through it, water can directly create the damage. It is very difficult to dry out that trapped in water. So, you need to protect the external wall by application of may be paints, proper paints and allow the water to travel down. Now, this water may be trapped on the roofs if there is not proper drainage at the roof. So, these may lead to leakage from the roof. So, rain water if it is trapped in the roof for long time, it may gradually damage the rooftop that, that is the topmost ceiling and you will see it as damp when it has already percolated inside. What is the point important here? Ground water is also continuously trying to enter, but maybe the bottommost floor is not the structural floor, but the roof top is the structural floor it has reinforcement. Usually bottom floor may be made of plain cement concrete, it does not have reinforcement in many a cases. But if the reinforcement is damaged, then the structure becomes weak. 
So, it is very important to have a proper damp proofing at roofs and one has to be very particular on the slopes at roof at balconies where water which are semi open areas on window charges where the water should drain off and obviously, prolonged accumulation due to dust, dirt, leaves getting entrapped uh, choking the roof drains all are to be under the cause of damp due to rain water. External wall to be protected up to plinth level against accumulated rain water in the surrounding areas of the building. So, that I discussed with the picture earlier. Now, coming to the leaking service lines. Inlet water line, we have very well understood, understood in design wet area, dry area. So, wet area means they will have inlet water lines, sub water supply lines coming in. Obviously, when there is inlet water line, the outlet water line will also be there. So, all the areas like kitchens, toilets, pantries, wet utilities, wherever, whatever be the building type, residential, hotel, airport, one has to be very careful on the leakages on these kind of lines. You all know sometimes fixtures are trapped, the traps of the fixtures are embedded in the floors. So, leakages in the traps at the joints can also lead to damp, can also lead to entry of moisture, allows entry of moisture into the structural floor. So, one has to be very careful on leaking fixture traps. Other is the building in the building is improper drainage of air conditioners. So, the water that comes out needs to be properly drained from the air conditioner. Otherwise, that may also lead to some kind of damp, localized damp and creating a damage to the structure and other is the rainwater pipe connections at the roof. So, just by seeing when you become an architect, you must be able to identify what kind of, what is the reason behind a particular dam and nonetheless you have to take action. So, what we discussed earlier that is our known enemy the ground water and the rain water can be taken care when we are actually designing the building or executing the construction. But these lines that is the leakages from service lines one has to be very careful and one has to identify or take care or maintain the building regularly to avoid dams being happening from these points. So, coming to the end of this lecture, the methods of dam proofing. As I told from ground water checking, you can have a continuous kind of layer to prevent the moisture to move up. Sometimes you need to have integrated dam proofing. Sometimes it may be a surface treatment. You may have cracks, you may require to push in some kind of damp proof material that is through gunniting and pressure gunniting. Cavity walls can help you in segregating from outside to inside. So, we will try to understand all these six methods of damp proofing in our next lecture. So, we can summarize 
that damp gives rise to unhealthy conditions, unhygienic conditions, but how can we understand that a place is getting damped? So, this entrapped moisture can give some clue through its unsightly patches. So, you can register that a building is experiencing moisture inside it when you see such patches or you see suddenly a plaster piece comes out and falls. It may be because of other reasons too, there may be structural reasons, failures etc. But you must get a hint that it could be one of the probable reasons could be moisture. Similarly, if you see some bricks experiencing the efflorescence that is the salt patches coming out, then you must immediately get a thought of that the building is experiencing damp from some or the other point. So, if you are curious to know if you are having the training, if you having the expert eyes, you can find out what is the source, you can immediately correct it with the different methods which I have just talked about. Float tiles may get loosened due to weakening of adhesion and that is because of moisture. As we had understood plywood when we told that plywood layers can come out, veneers can come out just because the moisture, just because the adhesive can get loosened because of moisture. Similarly, the float tiles can also come out. This you will experience mostly in areas like washrooms kitchen tiles, dados where from the water lines pass. So, any leakage inside the concealed pipe will be reflected in loosened tiles. Electrical fittings can get deteriorated, leakages of current and short circuits in gadgets which you touch can also give you a clue that the building is getting damaged or getting ruined by moisture. So, I have shown you pictures when we covered corrosion, the entrapped moisture can cause rusting and corrosion of metal items and portions of concrete also may fall off. So, these are the ill effects of dampness and also these are the clues to keep you aware that yes, your building is experiencing damp. So, thank you.